Hello and welcome. This is Mouse Gunner, and we're back with some more of the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. And we uh, have entered a cave, killed an ogre. We took a fair amount of damage, but I did heal a little bit of it by eating provisions, which I had a huge number of provisions. This character seems to collect them quite readily. And uh, we got another of Zagor's keys. So I now have two of Zagor's keys, and I only need three to get his the highest reward. Of course, I have to survive as well. But we're also have, having a quest to hunt a giant spider, uh, which we are currently attempting to do in these caves. So let's go ahead. We enter a large cavern with a natural pool of water. Stalagmites have formed naturally rising from the floor. There are a number of exits, some of which are blocked. While you have surveyed the area, while you have surveyed the area, you have failed to notice the three firetop spiders, which are now almost on top of you. Their mandibles glisten as they close in, eager for a feast. Let's fire to fight them. I do not remember their mechanics. I do know that I fought quite a few of them when I did the Iran Gotspeed playthrough. I think they fight pretty straightforward, but I'm just going to go ahead and do a killing blow here. See if we can kill the spider. Come on, good roll, good roll. All right, we did manage to finish it. I think they attack mostly straight ahead, not at diagonals. At least that's my, what I remember. Oh, I got hit with a web. That's unfortunate. Um, I don't remember what the web does. What does web do? Web, hello? Prevents us from moving, I think. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and attack. Ah, they move backwards. I, I forgot about that mechanic. So that's the one thing, thing that's interesting about the spiders. They move forward and backwards, but you never really know which one they're going to do. Just go ahead and do a normal attack here. Have another clash. Really good roll. All right, I'll move ahead. I Again, I don't think they can attack diagonal, diagonally, even if they wanted to. So let's go ahead and uh, just do a stunning slash here. Now I'm going to assume it's going to move backwards. But it's probably going to move forwards this time. So let's killing blow, super kill it. Alright. So I did get hit at least once there. I think it wasn't for a lot of damage. Two stamina. Okay. So we've gained uh, nine souls. You defeated the fire top spiders. With the fire top spiders dealt with, you put away your weapon and decide where to go next. There are multiple tunnels leading off with some that appear blocked. These passages covered with thick webs, and there appears to be movement inside. That east passage doesn't look like a giant spider would be in there. Perhaps I should avoid that. Probably a good plan. So, I'm more than likely going to go north here, but I'm thinking about eating provisions again, because we're going to fight a big fight here. And I think it's worth it. So I'm going to go ahead and heal myself again. I'll, I'll hate myself if I find a uh, somewhere to rest, but... Let's go ahead and uh, head north. The bottomless pit plummets deeper into the mountain. A narrow stone path leads to the other side, but stretch across it is a gigantic spider's web. You can see some unfortunate victims dotted across the web, wrapped up in silken thread. Clearly this web is still occupied. Hopefully you can make it across the web before the occupants return. You begin across the webbing. As you're halfway across, you hear an unpleasant skittering. Firetop spiders. You must make it in to the other side and quickly. You know, I just uh, realized that uh, I'm having to actually test my skills. So obviously the dexterous uh, uh, trait doesn't actually quite work the way I thought it did. I thought you automatically passed any test of skill, but it looks like it overrides some and not all. Okay, looks like we passed. Fortunately, skill does not drop when you uh, test it like luck does. You escape the fire top spiders. Scramble across the sticky webbing. You make it to the other side. One of the fire top uh, spiders tries to sink its fangs into you as you clamber off the webbing. Thankfully, you make it off the webbing in the nick of time. Quickly, you draw your weapon and cut the thick strands from the side, the side of the pit. The rest of the web cannot hold the amount of spiders on it and begins to drift back towards the other side of the pit. The fire top spiders give a shriek of surprise and tumble into the inky blackness below. Leave the webbed bottomless pit. You squeeze through a narrow cave full of assorted rock columns. 
A sudden shaking causes you to stumble, and you look up at the ceiling of the cavern. Stalactites are hanging from the ceiling, but it looks like they're about to fall at any second. Suddenly, one falls directly in front of you and shatters to the ground. With your dexterity... Okay, this is where we get an automatic pass. You sprint across the cavern, weaving and ducking through the falling stalactites as they shatter to the ground in front of you. You easily outrun the falling stalactites. As you cross the cave, you make it to the other side. As the last of the stalactites shatter the ground, you stop to catch your breath. It seems you're safe for now. Follow the east tunnel. You enter a cavern and look around to see dozens of stalactites and stalagmites bordering the perimeter. Numerous strips can be heard. In the far corner is a very large sticky cobweb. It is littered with the bones and other detritus, presumably from, um, from unwary victims of a creature that calls it its home. I think I found the home of the giant spider. I'd better ready the sedative and coat my axe. Near the back of the cavern, you you also come across a pair of boots, which seem to have been quite made quite recently. All right, I don't know if uh, the preparation of the axe is automatic. I'm going to assume yes, because I don't have anything that I can do, so that is fine. So, uh, I'm not going to try on the boots because I know what happens when you do that. Uh, it's a trap, so don't do it. Let's go ahead and uh, continue to investigate the cave. As you investigate the cavern, you suddenly hear a scurrying of steps behind you. You wing around to face the grotesque black uh, shape of the giant spider, which has been stalking you. Alas, my query. This beast will make for a fine capture for Ignatius, although... Subduing it shall be no easy task. The spider's body is at least three feet across, and you quickly draw your weapon to defend yourself. Fight the giant spider. All right, now I do remember that the spider can do this, like, leaping attack. And it'd probably be a good idea to move out from in front of it. Yeah, that was the attack I remember. Let's hit it with this stunning slash. I don't know if I'm safe where I am, but... I think that's a good call. Okay, so it's gonna move. I don't know if it's gonna move straight ahead or not. Um, if it moves backwards, th throwing the killing blow would be a waste. But I gotta go for the hit. Okay. Looks like I can hit it again, so let's do so. Okay, it's probably gonna attack me here. I'll just clash with it. Looks like I've got a higher skill, and I rolled better, so there we go. Got out of that without getting hit. You defeated the giant spider. The giant spider crashes to the ground, exhausted. The sedative from your bone axe is doing its work. While the creature is weakened, you cut your axe once again and hack at it one more time. It convulses, twitches, and then finally is still. All right, eensy weensy. As one of you, subdue and capture the giant spider. Success! The giant spider is mine, but this mountain is clearly full of strange creatures. Do I take the giant spider back to Ignatius, or should I count the hunt for something more exotic? Huh. Yeah, let's, let's continue on a hunt for more valuable prey, because we want the dragon. Decide to ignore Ignatius, uh, pa ignore Ignatius, Ignatius's patron in Shazar, and look for a more valuable return for your time in the mountain. Before you leave, however, you take one large swing of your axe and end the life of the bloated arachnid. Oh, okay, so we don't actually do the quest if we continue. You have a, uh, a scout around and apart from the boots, which you decide to ignore. There appears to be a little of a value in the cavern. Leave the cavern through the southeast passage. All right, so our main quest for the big soul reward is actually a uh, the dragon. So we want to go for that. You stoop to enter a small cave, but thankfully you can stand proper, uh, properly once inside. Cobwebs thread across the walls, floor, and ceiling, and you can't help but feel incredibly unsafe. There are multiple tunnels leading off, with some that appear blocked. The west passage is covered with thick webs, and there appears to be movement inside. The only other thing of note in the cave is the corpse of the goblin. It's partly wrapped in webbing. Let's go ahead and uh, go to the south. I'm not going to search the body. I know it's there. Uh, I'm not going to take the hit for that. Let's head south. You're under a large stony cavern with stalagmites 
rising from the floor. Aside from the tunnel you just entered, there's another tunnel leading out of the cavern. Sinister looking cobwebs cover the floor and walls. Two goblins are facing the tunnel you have just come out of. They seem to be arguing with each other over who is going to go in first. They do not seem to have noticed you. No, Nurk! You first! I know Thez dead! You go! Boss say me bo uh, boss. You first, me keep lookout. As they, as a pair are so busy with their argument, you could quite easily ambush them. All right, we'll surprise the goblins and attack. Sneak up behind the pair as they argue. Test your luck. Uh-oh. I didn't want to do that. All right, we passed, but I don't like losing the luck for something like that. The goblins do not notice you walking up behind. Staying up behind the goblins, you are able to dispatch them easily. All right. <laughs> Ask question later. With the goblins disposed of, there's nothing else of interest in the room. You decide to head into the creepy into the creepy cobweb tunnel and explore it. Ask questions later. Murder two goblins in the spider tunnels before talking to them. And you east. Alright, we're out this way now. Leave the confines of the spider tunnels and find yourself on a ledge. You can move north or south. I'm gonna go south and rest at this bench, I think. Uh, save our progress. If it doesn't let me, then it doesn't let me. After a short time, you reach a fork in the path. With the path continue, uh, continuing westwards, eastwards, you can see a broad stone bridge. Yeah, it does let me rest. At the fork, there's a bench of solid wood, and above the bench, a sign reads, Rest ye here, wary traveler. Let's sit on the best and rent bench. Ah, sit on the bench and rest. Sit down on the bench and rest for a moment. Five stamina. We didn't need quite that much, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and go on the path to the east. I'm hoping that I'll pass this automatically when I go through here. Follow the path to the east. Soon enough, you arrive at the broad but cracked stone bridge, which leads over a yawning subterranean chasm. On the other side of the bridge, you can see an archway carved by the uh, carved to resemble a huge dwarven head. With no other options, you start to cross the bridge. No sooner have you taken a few steps than the floor begins to crumble. Thanks to your dexterity, you manage to sprint across the ancient bridge before it, uh, it falls away entirely. Now uh, the searching of the dwarf is uh, seeming to have been a little bit more important than I thought. You escape from the crumbling floor. You sigh with relief. You can hear the masonry crashing down far into the water. The sound vibrates around the chamber, and you wonder what creatures you have stirred in the darkness beyond. I'll look over the edge. Uh, should I do that? I've never done it. Let's look over the edge into the darkness. You crawl to the edge and peer down into the gloom. Your ear is just making out the sound of rushing water below. Somewhere far off, deep in the crevice, you hear, suddenly hear an unearthly wolf-like howl. That's like no wolf I've ever heard. Our top mountain seems full of strange surprises. Get up and continue onwards. I don't know what that uh, sound is referring to. The carved dwarven head archway looms ahead, and you marvel at its construction. The previous inhabitants of the of Firetop Mountain were obviously once proud of their home, as shown in this high level of artistry. The features look to have been chiseled into the rock face in a style that could only be of dwarven design. Dwarven structures, I wonder what beasts inhabit this abandoned place. We might get a chance to fight the Cyclops. Here's the dwarven entrance hall. It is everything you had expected, lined with tall stone columns that stretch into the darkness, intricately carved in the image of a dwarf of dwarven heroes of old. I sense nothing living here. I had best continue deep into the mountain. But halfway down the hall, you notice a path that leads off to the left behind some of the statues. I'm assuming that that comes back around to the rest of the path, but I've never actually gone that way. So I am curious what's over there. Alternatively, we could continue on and try and fight the Cyclops, which might be worth it. But you know what? I'm going to go the westward path. I've never been this way. Let's see what's over here. We reach the ruins of what looks like an ancient bridge spanning the crevasse, long since collapsed. You can just make out the other side of it on the, other, uh, on the far side. There's no way you will be able to make it to the other side, so you decide to head back into the Dwarven Halls. Hmm. Interesting. I'm sure that has a purpose in other, uh, and depending on different paths. Let's continue northwards. As you walk through the hall, you notice movement out of the corner of your eye. Something appears to be watching you. Let's investigate the movement. 
Why not? Quickly as you chase after, running past the columns as you reach the middle of the hall, you are scampering off to your left, followed by a high-pitched shriek. What was a goblin off in... Oh, I'm sorry. Was that a goblin off in the distance? Investigate the location of the sound. You step behind one of the giant statues and find some old bones amongst some rocky debris, which look like they have come from a small creature long since dead. You suspect the sound was probably a rat, as there is a small hole in the wall. You're about to turn around when you find a scrap of parchment. Huh, I wonder what this is all about. Yes, Tromos Tower, Darkwood Forest Hills, River, Stonebridge River. Hmm. I wonder if that is like uh, just uh, uh, something from another one of the uh, the books in the series. I just drawn a map of Darkwood Forest. While the interior of the forest is not shown, it does label the dwarven village of Stonebridge to the north and the tower to the south. Belong to someone called Yastromo. You doubt this will be useful on this particular adventure, but take it away for uh, take it anyway for your future travels. Okay. Reach a junction with three different passageways. I'm tempted to go west because I'm pretty sure east is the Cyclops, but again, Cyclops fighting might be worth it. Let's follow the northern passageway just to see what happens. Discover the entrance to an old dwarven mine. Your hopes of riches and treasures, however, are quickly dashed as you discover the mine has long since been blocked by a cave-in. Search the cave-in. You begin to dig through the rocks and debris on your hands and knees. This would go a lot faster if you had a shovel or a pick, but unfortunately there are no tools nearby. You have to weigh a particularly large piece of rock and fall back in surprise as you are nipped by the grotesque mandible of a rock grub. Ow. Fight the rock grubs. Okay. I actually do not know how rock grubs behave, but if they behave anything like other rock grubs, I, they should be pretty easy to fight. I'm just going to go ahead and killing blow this one. We're going to have a clash. Hopefully I roll decently. There we go. This guy's going to move there. We'll go ahead and give it a stunning slash. And then it's going to move there, and we'll kill it. All right. Those are one of the easiest enemies. It's one of the first enemies that you could potentially face in this, uh, in this game, so fairly easy. And uh, eight souls. Not too bad. You've defeated the rock rubs. Fall back against uh, the cave wall, exhausted from the surprise battle. Having decided that you've had enough of this worthless dead end, you, uh, you leave the cave in, the creatures of Firetop Mountain, return to the junction. Alright, now I think I'm going to go west. I want to explore things that I haven't explored before, and see what we've got. Ooh, look at this. You enter a wide corridor, decorated with large dwarven statue carvings. They are beautifully carved and look as though they could come to life at any moment. Nearby is a dead goblin. It looks like it has been completely crushed against a wall, and quite recently at that. Nasty way to de die. How was it crushed, though? You begin to walk through the hallway when suddenly you hear a quite quiet click. One of the statues begin to move. Its head turns left and right, searching for any sign of life. But how on earth will you get past it? Ah, uh, hold out a runestone to statues. There appears to be a message carved in, in dwarven ruins on the floor. All right, we're going to attempt to avoid the statue gaze, although I don't think this will work. Like a silent stone sentinel, the dwarven statue surveys the hallway, moving its head back and forth. You watch the movement of the head. Prepare yourself to try to safely time your movements to avoid the statue's line of vision. Best our luck. Like we succeeded, although we do lose the luck. You need a score of eight, and we got a six. You sneak past the dwarven statues. So if we had the rune, uh, we probably could have gotten past that easily. The rune you get from the dwarf that was tortured. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't do that event right. That's the first time I, I could have actually gotten the rune and had it be useful, unfortunately. Having escaped from the dwarven trap, you press on ahead. The tunnel skirts around the edge of a subterranean chasm chasm must cut through the heart of the mountain itself. All of a sudden there is a leathery flapping and an awful shriek. You only have a moment, moments to prepare as a flock of bats swoop in to attack. Fight the bats. Okay, I remember these being kind of tricky opponents. I don't remember why. Let's 
go ahead. See if we can hit this guy with a stunning slash. Alright, I think it's safe to assume that these things attack diagonally, but I could be wrong. I was wrong. Okay, it's more than likely going to move here, so we'll attack it. Alright. I think it queued a move. Let's see if we can uh, attack it. Alright, so I think I figured out how these things attack. Let's go ahead and move, follow it. Then it looks like it's going to move here, so we'll killing blow. Although they moved into each other, so we killing blow the wrong one. Then let's just uh, stunning slash it. It's going to move in front of me, attack, and killed. Alright, I think I figured out the mechanic of that particular enemy. Although how useful that will be, I don't know. Okay. We lost one stamina, not too bad. Twelve souls, good. We defeated the bats. Take care of the last of the shrieking bats, then stumble, uh, then stumble dangerously. Carefully put away your weapon and attempt to steady yourself on the ledge. Regain your balance, carefully continue down the passageway. Follow the passage to the north. Northward, northwards, the passageway ends at a solid wooden door. You listen at the door, but can hear nothing. There appears to be no choice but to open the door. Open the door. You enter a large square room. You flash your lantern around the room and catch a quick glimpse of its empty emptiness. Although there are paintings on the wall before you, your lantern suddenly goes out. You try to relight it, but it will not catch. In the blackness, you hear a succession of frightful noises. Howls, screams, cries, and wail wails are getting louder and louder until you they reach the pitch where you must cover your ears. Let's go ahead and light a blue candle. Throw open the pack and pull out the candle. Immediately, it lights itself of its own accord. The howling stops and the room appears, bathed in a blue light from the candle. All right, we got some luck out of that. That's good. On the walls, the figures in the paintings are moving. They are mouthing silent screams as if trapped in a two-dimensional hell. On the wall opposite are two doors. We can go left or right, or we can investigate further. Let's go ahead and investigate further. As you subconsciously begin to approach the living mural, you are unaware of the speed with which your candle is burning. Suddenly it flickers and goes out. You again begin to hear the piercing screams, and their pitch grows on unbearable level. You drop to your knees, clutching your ears, and desperately try to crawl towards an exit. Alright, we'll continue going west. You run along the wall, searching for a door, but find none. Your ears are on fire with agony. Crap. Try the east wall. You go up around the length of the wall and find a door. Quickly, you fumble with your the handle and it turns. Open the door. Alright, so that was a mistake. Don't stick around. You push your way, uh, the heavy wooden door open. It creaks with a labored groan. As it moves... Revealing an incredible sight. Standing guard over the exit is a stern stone statue. It appears to be one of the dwarven kings who ruled Firetop Mountain before the Warlock's invasion. The statue is holding an ancient warhammer with dwarven runes carved into the head. Upon closer inspection, it seems to be loose. The most impressive warhammer I've ever seen. Should we take it or not? Taking it might be a bad. Let's take the warhammer, though. Inspecting the warhammer more closely, you see that it is definitely definitely is loose. You give a mighty heave, but the weapon fails to break free from the stone grip of the dwarven king. However, you suddenly feel blessed, and you have a renewed sense of confidence. Some sh some strange dwarven powers at work here. Gain two luck. Unfortunately, we didn't need luck. We need skill. It flew through the northern door. You enter a derelict a feast hall. Skeletons lie seated at benches, while some lie on the floor. The table, chairs, and skeletons are all covered in cobwebs. One of the skeletons is holding a silver, ch silver chalice as though proposing a toast. On the table is a silver crucifix glinting in one of the shafts of light. All of those items are useful. Um, I'm going to grab the chalice, though, because I think there's something we can do with it. You walk up to the skeleton proposing a toast and attempt to take the chalice. It seems to have quite a grip. You give it a tug and the chalice comes free as you fall backwards. Sighing, you get up and put the chalice in your pack. Then look over at the bench again. The toasting skeleton jitters as it turns its head. Boo! Jitters to life, and the other skeletons come to life as well. As the skeletons leap over the table, the crucifix is kicked off and skitters off down a hole. Never to be seen again. Yeah, I figured it was one or the other. I told you that would get some someone eventually. The, the lead skeleton cackles at its practical joke. Now let's finish them off. Draw your weapon and prepare to fight. 
All right, we got a skeleton right in front of us. I figure we might as well killing blow it right in the face. Let's not mess around. Come on, good rolls. Looks like we got him. Not finishing him off, though. Um, whew. I'm gonna backpedal. Hopefully that will get me out of the attack range. Try and move around the table here. Move here. Right, I don't know if this guy can attack me or not. Uh, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to stunning slash him. Okay, I suspect that he'll move here. So, I'm going to killing blow him. Make sure he's dead. Okay, let's try and finish this guy off. Okay, this guy's going to make an attack on me. I don't know if he can hit me or not, but let's just go ahead and assume. But he can't. He's going to move in front of me, so let's just attack him. Fortunately, they have just enough health that I uh, can't kill him. Okay, let's, uh, let's finish him off. I'm going to move here. For, I think I'm safe there. Okay, let's killing blow this guy and finish him off. Five health seems to do it, except for the guy that was the big guy. I did hit him with five health, and he was still around, so he, I think he had seven health. All right, we killed the skeletons. You defeat the skeletons. I'm always amazed by the enchant uh, by the enchanted that keeps these. I think it's supposed to be enchantment. I'm always amazed by the enchantment that keeps these creatures upright. The last of the skeletons defeated, you see no more reason to be here. You decide to press on ahead. You want to go down or go north? I don't know if I like the idea of going down. Let's go north. You are stopped by another intersection. To the north, up some steps, you can vaguely hear voices as well as the sound of rushing water in the distance. The passage also continues eastwards. I don't... I just see a wall. Let's go up the steps to the north, though. Here's the top of steps, stairs, and you notice that the floor is covered in sand. The walls are rocky and uneven, and feel cold and damp to the touch. The air has also become cool and fresh. You reach an intersection. To the north, you can hear the sound of fast running water, and to the east, you can hear the sound of voices. All right, you know what? I think this is a good point to go ahead and put a cut in the video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. This is Mouse Gunner, signing out.